Hey everyone, I'm Austin and this is Veloce Midwest. Now my next major video is still a bit on the horizon with research bogging down a little as well as the fact that I'm moving apartments. So in the meantime, before I get to my next video which will cover a racing team and a missing supercar concept, let's talk once again about Alfa Romeo in a very quick kinda ramshackle video about car design. Namely, a very arbitrary list of my personal top 6 Alfa Romeo designs, since if you're talking about Alfa, the first thing you pretty much have to talk about is the styling, because it's the first thing you see when it comes to these cars. And this Italian automaker has a long history of beautifully designed cars, coming from their own pen or the pens of various Italian coach builders and designers like Zagato or Pininfarina. Will you disagree with my list? Probably, but that's why this is my list, so let's talk about it. Number 6. And if you're wondering why I'm starting from 6 and not like a top 5, uh, that's partly because it was a top 5, but then I realized I forgot something, uh, so I kind of just made it a top 6 now. And let's start with the first alpha that really caught my attention, the one that I've had the longest from a distance love affair with. The 916 GTV, a glorious piece of bodywork from Enrico Fumia from Pininfarina, which was partly based on an unused Audi concept called the Quartz. Audi's loss is Alpha's gain, because even with a face that has a notable hate it or love it look, to me it's simply one of the de facto cars I think of when it comes to what Alfa Romeo was doing during the 1990s, with a new age of design work that was putting distance between them and the boxier designs of cars like the 164, 155, 33, and the SZ. Throw on a GTV cup body kit, and you have one smoking piece of Italian car. Open the hood to a Busso V6 and ogle the shiny intake covers. And although I wasn't a huge fan of the 2000s facelift, in the right color and the right spec, it's a pretty fine looking car too. And don't forget the interior. An occasional cheapness to the materials aside, you got sculpted Momo seats, a curvy center console, and attractive curves and round gauges just everywhere. And speaking of the center console, the GTV was briefly sold alongside the 164 and 155, which featured very blocky, button-filled decks like these. The GTV simplified this into an interior so ergonomic you'd be surprised to learn it was even an Italian car to begin with. Sure, the engines, while quirky and full of character, were never the quickest blocks on the uh, block, and the front-wheel drive platform limited performance to a point, but we're not really talking about performance here. And besides, with a body built to be as rust-proof as possible, you had a pretty beautiful, murky weather car. Am I biased on this one, being one of the first alphas to really catch my eyes and thus turn me onto this unprecedented automotive obsession in my life? Yes, I am biased. Yes. But it's my video, and I'm allowed to be biased. Number 5. Yes, a sedan. The Julia, the finest four-door I think Alpha has ever produced. There are purists out there who say Alpha should only be two-door sports cars, however, given Alpha has been making regular passenger cars for decades upon decades, I've always found this take kind of ridiculous. Alpha has had a long history with making engaging to drive stylish sedans, and the Julia is, in some ways, their four-door swan song. And hopefully with their progress in introducing more crossover designs and even a possible three-row SUV on the horizon, hopefully the Julia will not be their last saloon. The Giulia was penned by a team led by Marco Tencone, who had previously designed the fantastic Alpha 4 C Coupe as well as the 6th generation Maserati Quattroporte. The Giulia debuted for the 2016 model year and instantly made anything else on the road look old and tired, especially amongst many of its German rivals. A more aggressive Quadrifoglio model instilled a mixture of beauty and the beast, and the GTM might be one of the sexiest four-door cars ever to grace any road or track anywhere. I may die on that hill, and of course, good body lines need good colors to highlight and accentuate, and Alfa Rosso, Misano Blue, and Okra GT, and Montreal Verde do this in spades. The all-black TI Sport Carbon Fiber Editions also happen to look exceptionally good. All in all, it's a design that I think will be very hard-pressed to age. Alpha Zone designers seem to agree, as very little was changed for the 2024 refresh, save for some modern Tonale-inspired headlights. Alpha knew well enough not to do anything too BMW-like here, although to be honest, when it comes to over-the-top design work, maybe Alpha could pull that off too. But overall, yes, 
I have the Julia in this top 6. What is probably Alpha's most common car is also, I believe, one of their best designs. The excellent performance and driving characteristics just make it even better. Number 4. I'm not sure if any modern sports coupe strikes me as much as the 8C Competagione. Sure, its platform is partly derived from the Maserati Gran Turismo and uses a retuned Maserati engine, but it's all Alfa Romeo on top. Every angle looks good on this thing, every curve, every line, the paint, the design bits, the, the headlights, the way they kind of glisten, it's all pure sex for the eyes. The 8C had a concept variation show up in 2003 and was designed by Wolfgang Egger, who at the time was known for working with Audi. Am I sensing a pattern here? The 8C hit production for the 2008 model year and was offered both in as a coupe and a slightly inferior looking convertible model, which as Alpha nomenclature demanded, was called the Spider. It was also Alpha's first rear wheel drive sports car since the discontinuation of the RZ after 1994. And you know, I guess I don't know what to say about it outside of, look at it. It's gorgeous. It's art. Every piece of it is fantastic. It's a moving sculpture. Never mind it uses that god-awful sequential transmission that sometimes the car can suffer from rather somewhat fatal electronic issues. It's about how it looks, and it looks good even just sitting still. We're talking about the styling here, and the thing is just rolling art. It's a modern car that for me is right up with there with the classics. It's a modern classic. It's the best of all worlds. It's the 8C Competagione. Number 3. From here on out, it's the classics, and by god are they beautiful. And here in number 3, a car that in a lot of ways makes me think of an Italian Mercedes SL Gullwing, the Giulietta Sprint Speciale, which first appeared for the public in 1959. But then again, I would say that no finer coupe has ever been made. But there are two more cars above this, both of which are coupes, and may I state that the Gullwing Merc is probably a little better looking. But if that car was in this list, then this and the following cars would be my four favorite car designs in the world. Sharing a name with the more passenger-worthy Giulietta, Franco Scaglioni of Design House Bertone saw he could do more with the already attracted Giulietta and went on designing the Sprint Speciale. Though maybe not quick by the engine block as the car has utilized several variations of Alpha's long-lived but not particularly powerful twin-cam Nord engines, the car could nonetheless hit notably high speeds at a relatively good pace thanks to a drag coefficient of 0.28, a number that wouldn't be beat for another 20 years. Despite a short production run, the legacy of this car's beauty would, in some manner, live on to the 1990s by serving as the basis for the SSZ Stradale, a car interesting enough to have its own video for, especially since there's a museum packed with these things here in Wisconsin. But to sum it up, it was an SS-inspired car made for racing and made on custom order for Alpha enthusiasts who wanted something like the original Speciale. Although in truth, there is nothing quite like the original Sprint Speciale. Number 2 and number two is kind of similar, namely in that it shared a name with another passenger car and also featured something of a mild revival, the Julia TZ. The TZ was actually more of a race car that saw a limited number of road cars produced for FIA homologation rules. Featuring bodywork by Zagato, the Julia TZ proved quite successful in its racing debut for the 1963 FISA Monza Cup, wherefore Julia TZs took the top four places in the race's prototype category. Now for me, Zagato always had a way with Alphas, and this earlier collaboration with Alpha is still probably their best. The tubular chassis has a rocket-like appearance, and the Zagato camback styling for the rear is as iconic as far as Alphas go. No wonder the junior Zagato from the decades later tried to mimic the TZ, it was just a great design to work off of and to kind of just continue and redesign. A second version called the TZ2 was released in 1964, featuring strengthened underpinnings and a slightly redesigned bodywork. I prefer the TZ1, but this was still a looker, it's just still a smooth and very clean cut design. There's not a hair out of place on these things, it's simply perfect, so perfect that a German collector in 2011 commissioned a new one off rebirth of the TZ called the Zagato TZ3 Corsa, and built off of a Gillette Vertigo. There was also the TZ3 Stradale, a series of custom cars built off of the Dodge Viper ACRX. Good lookers, though honestly none of them again compared to the original T Julia TZ. The original was just too good for any car to be built off and just serve as a recreation. Not to say those look bad, just again, there's nothing like the original. And that leads us to number one. The one that the Alpha fans would hate me for if I snuffed it in some other spot. And honestly, I'll admit, for my own 
personal opinions, I struggled to decide whether I'd personally place this under the TZ or not, but the ghost of Franco Scaglioni would find me in my sleep and kill me probably if I did that, as this is another one of his designs. And honestly, again, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that the 33 Stradale had to be here. It might be the best looking car in the world. It's one of Alpha's few mid-engine offerings, featuring a mid-mounted V8. It also got a six-speed manual in the 1960s. The fact that this is even a road-going car at all from that era is mind-boggling to say the least. It's exceptionally modern, and although it couldn't have possibly lived up to the 33 Stradale, it really makes me wish Alfa Romeo did get the Maserati MC20 to make into a modern Stradale. Even though I think they were going to sort of blandly call it the 6C or something to keep up with the forcing the 8C, but still, it would have been a good attempt. But anyway, again, just look at it. I mean, I was browsing the Hot Wheels section at a Walmart, and even as a toy, it kind of just stopped me in my tracks. I had to buy it. It's probably the only version of a Stradale I'll ever be able to actually buy. Because every angle, every line, gaze upon it. Art can express a thousand words, but sometimes words can't be said. You just have to look, and you have to feel, feel it. it. Some art, you just gotta let it flow through you. And I feel the 33 Stradale. How about you? Thanks for watching. Hey, once again, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was kind of quickly put together because I haven't had a larger video out in a while, so uh, hopefully this will kind of tide over to my next video, which, like I said, will be about a missing supercar concept, so stay tuned. Uh, and a couple of honorable mentions in this video are. Uh, I think I did mention the 4C, also a great design, uh, the Alfa Romeo GT and the Brera, uh, two more modern cars that are also great designs, although the Brera for one I don't believe is the greatest performance car, and also the Series 1 and Series 2 Spiders, uh, also just super clean designs, just elegant Italian styling. So and just a couple honorable mentions, you can put them, you know, wherever, you know, if you got your own list, come on, put them in the comments, what's your favorite Alfa Romeo, what are your favorite design cars? Remember to subscribe, like the video if you liked it, uh, share the video, please, share the video, and stay tuned for more, you and your cars.